Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Amen. Turn with me to the book of Luke, the 18th chapter. You're going to the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, and we're going to start reading from the first verse through the eighth verse. Luke, the... 18th chapter, starting at the first verse through the 8th verse. If you don't have it, it's on the screens in front of you. Let us all stand for the reading of God's word. Luke 18, verse 1 through 8. And this is from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. Uh, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Verse 7, And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to use for a subject just for a few minutes. Don't stop praying for Jesus to return. Don't stop praying for Jesus to return. And I got a parenthesis, thy kingdom Come, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, giving your name the praise and glory and honor for everything that you have done for us. Thanking you right now for this day. This is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to rejoice that you saved our souls, you made us whole. We thank you, Father, for eternal life in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you open up our spiritual understanding that we may receive your word, place it in our hearts so we can live a life for you. If there is anyone here today who does not know Jesus Christ as their savior, it is our prayer, Father, that you will prick their hearts and the Heavenly Father allow them to say, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name, amen. Don't stop praying for the return of Jesus. Don't stop praying for the return of Jesus. Remember, uh, in our text today, some of you probably uh, heard of this parable. It's a very popular parable, but maybe people have taken it out of context or didn't put it in uh, the correct context that it's really in. So that's what we're going to do today as we come to uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ once again. And I told you this, once we get to chapter 19, finish chapter 19 of Luke, we will be done with the ministry of Jesus Christ, his earthly ministry. The only thing we would have to do is finish up his final week. But uh, after we get to Luke, in the end of Luke 19, we will be done with this series, which we started when we started the church over seven years ago. It's a lot of information that we have. We recorded everything. So all of it is on our Facebook page, on our, our website as well. So our text today introduces us to two people. Two people we're going to see today. First, we will see an unrighteous judge. This judge is completely pagan and probably in many ways very corrupt. He doesn't care about justice. He doesn't care about right and wrong. He doesn't care about God. And the scripture just told us he sure don't care about man. So, and the second person we're going to talk about is, in, in this parable, we're going to see a widow. 
And this widow is seeking justice from the judge. So some of you probably heard about this parable and you were always taught that this parable was teaching you to be persistent in prayer. And it is, yes, it's, it's telling you never to give up in praying. That is one aspect of this parable, but we're going to dig a little deeper to find out the other aspect that a lot of preachers don't cover in this part of the scripture. So once again, we're, we're not told the details concerning where this woman was wronged. All we're told is that she's seeking justice. She want justice. She want justification for whatever was done to her. She shows us what perseverance looks like, right? She shows us that no matter what you're going through, you should never give up, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, she keeps coming back to the judge over and over and over again. She's trying to wear him down so he will finally say, yes, I will help you. But this text, as you, as you said, we got to put it in, the cor in, this correct, in this correct context. Did you know that this text is really a continuation of what we studied from last week? chapter 17. And what did we study last week in chapter 17? The last part of chapter 17 of, uh, of Luke started and talked about the second coming of Jesus Christ from verse 20 all the way through verse 37. These verses, these eight verses are really a continuation of that. So let's go back and we're going to tie in the last part of what we studied last week to what we're going to study this morning. Last week we found out that the first coming of Jesus, when he first came, uh, uh, it was very quiet, right? Uh, people didn't know, not too many people knew the, about the baby born in a manger. Only the shepherds were there, right? Mary and Martha was there and, and that was it but the people in Jesus day the Jews were looking for this Messiah that was going to come like a flash of lightning he was going to come like a thunder roll they thought Jesus first coming was supposed to be this great and uh, pop and circumstance where Jesus will overthrow the Roman Empire and Jesus will set up his kingdom right then and there but Jesus didn't come that way did he not the first time he came humble. As a matter of fact, his coming was unnoticeable. But, but watch this. We also found this, this out though last week. And Jesus told them, well, they asked him, Jesus, where is your kingdom? And Jesus says, it's right in the midst of you. In other words, wherever Jesus is, that's where the kingdom is. So when Jesus was there, those 33 years on this earth, his kingdom was here. They just didn't see it. Jesus was talking about his spiritual kingdom, not this earthly kingdom that they wanted to set up right then and there. He's going to set up an earthly kingdom, but it wasn't 2018 years ago. Then we found out last week that the second coming is not going to be like the first coming. The second coming will be unmistakable. The second coming of Jesus, everybody is going to see him. The second coming of Jesus, there won't be a person on this planet when that, who will be alive when Jesus comes back again who will not see him come. Now, here's my thing to you about the second coming of Jesus Christ. The second coming of Jesus is not the rapture. We got to understand that the rapture is not the second coming of Jesus Christ. The rapture comes before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. As a matter of fact, the rapture comes seven years before the second coming coming of Jesus Christ. So when the second coming happens, watch this, that's when Jesus comes down and he sets up his kingdom for 1,000 years. You know when that happens, the scripture says that's like when the lightning flash, that's when the thunder rolls, that's when every eye is going to see him. So, so here it is. Here's the question. The question is, will the people who will see the second coming be ready when he comes? 
See, that, that's the question. Will the people who will be alive at that time, at the end of the seven-year tribulation, will they be ready when he comes? That's the, that's the question we're going to answer this morning. So while the parable has prayer in the forefront, yeah, we got prayer in the forefront about this woman who's very persistent in prayer. We're going to find out what that means <clears throat> in a minute. It means this, that the faith of Christians is the real point Jesus is trying to get at. He's trying to get at that your faith should never fail no matter what trial you go through, no matter what situation you go through, no matter what problem you go through. Guess what? You've got to have strong faith in Jesus. Amen. Your, your faith got to endure until the end. Your faith needs to endure beyond your trials and your tribulations. You got to say, Lord, increase my faith. You got to say, Lord, allow me to make it until the end. Amen. Amen. So watch this. Watch this. It brings me down to point one. Uh, this world system seeks to steal our faith. So point number one is, and if you see it on the screen, you got to fight through prayer. You got to fight in this world through your prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, how are you going to fight the evils that are in this world? If you're not persistent in praying, notice what this woman did. This woman was persistent in her prayer. Well, let's listen to verse 1. Verse 1 says this, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. In other words, the reason for this parable was for every believer to understand this, never give up praying. The reason is for you never to stop. Lord, I'm, I'm going to call on you every chance I get. And you know, especially these days that we live in, we, we've seen the world turned upside down. We see terrorism on every hand. We see people actually fighting people and, and harming people for their political views. Isn't that something? You need to be praying every chance you can get, amen? Uh, I really, I really, I really don't have to remind you that we live in a fallen world, do I? I, I shouldn't have to remind you that we live in a world that is full of sin. Our Lord's command here is that his followers must always pray. You mean to tell me you can pray all the time? Yes. You don't have to be on your knees every time to pray. You can pray while you're in your car, amen? You can pray while you're in the kitchen cooking, right? You can pray while your kid's at school. You can pray while you're on your job. You can pray on the inside. Lord Jesus, help me every single day single day. You can pray all the time because if you're not praying, then your mind is not stayed on Jesus. That, that, that's what he's saying. What are some things that, 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 that may try to rob us of our faith in this world? Let's see. Everything. That's it. Everything that's not like God is meant to try to rob you, steal from you, your faith in Jesus Christ. You, you just got to see it that way. You got to See it from the spiritual point that whatever you go through, the purpose is to do two things. Is either, watch this, to cause you to be stronger in faith or cause you to walk away from your faith. That's how, I don't care what it is. You can name it. You can tell me what it is. It could be sickness. It could be disease. It could be financial trouble. Then you ask yourself this one question, because I ain't got no money in my pocket, am I going to walk away from Jesus? Uh, you should ask yourself this question. When the doctors tell me, or if they ever tell me, Elon, you got six months to live, you got cancer, should I say, well, I'm going to stop believing in Jesus that day? See, that's where the problem comes. When we run into trials and tribulations, we stop praying. Instead of what Jesus is saying, saying here through this parable, you got to pray all the time. Oh, yeah, this world system, oh, yeah, it's trying, to, it's trying to strangle your faith. It's trying to get you to give up. It's trying to get you to throw in the towel. It's trying to get you to say, I quit on God. I quit on Jesus. Listen, you, you, look, you can be disappointed by people because people are going to disappoint you all the time. But never get disappointed with God. Never get disappointed with Jesus. Never get disappointed with the Holy Spirit. They'll never let you down. Look, don't put your trust in me. I'm going to let you down every single time. So I'm telling you right now. 
I'm not, don't try to put your faith in me. Put your faith in the word of God and in his Holy Spirit and in Jesus who saved your soul. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, we got to do it. I, listen, your, your, your health may fail you. It may be failing you right now. But are you going to give up on God? Yeah, yeah, you may have some financial problems, but are you going to give up on God? All this at times will try to drag you down and try to make you depressed. Your problems will try to get you to say there is no God, there is no Jesus. But what you have to say is, guess what? I'm not going to stop praying. I don't care what's going on in my life. I'm still going to call on the Lord every chance I can get. Can I, can I get a witness? In fact, many times, it's the trials and the sufferings that causes you to pray. Right? You, you heard that saying. You know, only time people pray is when they're going through something. Uh-huh. Only time people pray is when they're in trouble. You know, people hardly don't pray when everything is going right. People don't pray when everything is going well. So guess what? If you're going through troubles all the time, boy, you should be a praying brother and a praying sister. Because the way we complain so much about what we're going through, the way we complain about what we don't have and, and what's going on in our life, boy, we should be some prayer warriors up in here. Pastor, my, my, my voice is hoarse today because I was praying so much. I was calling on the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you go to work. Why you sound hoarse? I was praying all night last night because of what I was going through. Listen, you, you got to turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and tell them this. The struggle is real. Everybody going to struggle. I don't care who you are, I don't care wh wh where you live, I don't care how much money you have in your pocket, everybody is going to struggle. Guess what? Your struggle may not be my struggle, and my struggle may not be your struggle, but I know this, we all got struggles. We all going through something, so we need to say, Lord, I'm going to continue to pray every single time. Life struggles can wear us down sometimes. They can wear us down physically. They can try to wear us down spiritually. But Jesus is saying in this verse right here, listen, don't stop praying. Remember last week we talked about this too? Uh, it's almost like the world that Noah lived in, the world that Lot lived in. And the scripture says in those days of Lot and Noah that the people lived their lives every day without God. They, they never had, had God on their mind. They, they drank and they slept and they got married. They went to work and they built businesses. They did everything all the way up until the flood, all the way until Sodom was destroyed. They did whatever they could do. It's just like like that today, right? People live each and every day and they do not consider God, but you do. You consider God in your life and because you consider God in your life, the devil don't like it, right? And the devil is going to get mad and so therefore he will attack you. And if you don't know that the devil will attack you, then somebody didn't really explain to you what Christianity really is. The devil don't want you praying. He don't want you to read God's word. He don't want you to call on him when you are in trouble. He wants you to wallow in pity. He wants you to wallow in depression. And you need to tell the world, no, I've got a God who can fix every situation. You need to tell the world like Job told him, though he slay me, yet will I trust him, right? Oh, yeah, that, that's the kind of attitude we're supposed to be having uh, about God and the attitude we're supposed to have about prayer. See, the people today do not have God in their life. So when he says don't give up, when he says don't stop praying, there's a Greek word that's used in there. It's a humorous word, but listen to this. This Greek word is, is usually, uh, it means this. It means to uh, put a black eye. It means to hit under the eye. In other words, you got to hit the devil, right, every time he hits you. You hit him with prayer as he hit you with circumstances. 
Yeah, you got to give the devil a black eye. So every time you pray, you giving the devil a black eye. Every time you read the word of God, you giving the devil a black eye. He says, don't stop. Be persistent. And every time you're persistent in your Christian walk, every time you're persistent in living the life of Jesus Christ, the devil gets mad, he gets beat up, and then he got to leave you alone just for a little while. I mean, you know, he, he ain't going to never stop messing with you. He going to mess with you until the day you die. But at least you got one or two punches in on your way out. At least you, at least you fought. You didn't just stand there and get beat up, right? You didn't just stand there and let the devil beat you down. At least you fought your way through. At least you fought all through your life. At least you fought to say, I'm going to hold up the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. That brings me down to point number two. Listen, when we, point number two is don't stop praying. Yeah, don't don't stop praying. And listen, let's let's go over this parable again. That's verse two through eight. Eight a. He said this. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, "Give me justice against my adversary." For a while he refused, but afterwards he said to himself, "Though I." neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Look, look first. Let's look first at this judge. He doesn't care about God. He doesn't care about people. But watch this. He is an unbeliever. He is an unrighteous man. But because of this woman's persistence, because it was because he had mercy for her. It wasn't because he had love for her. It was just because of her persistence. You know, my, my wife is this kind of a person that, you know, especially for jobs and everything, she, she believes that, you know, once one door closes, another door is going to open. I never see the person get so many jobs so quick in my life through her persistence ever in my life. And if I, I remember my daughter, my son, and myself, we've been in situations we're looking for jobs. She would get on that phone. She would turn that situation around. Next thing you know, all of us working. You know what I'm saying? Look, we need money coming into the house. So don't, don't think you're going to sit there. <laughs> Everybody going to work in here somewhere. But she had that persistence. She never takes no for an answer. We were just telling our son that the other day. He's in college working on his third year. And we tell him, look, when you go into those, those I think, those conferences where they, they're now, he's at the stage where he has to pick his internship. So he, he was, last year he went to one and he was disappointed that one or two didn't call him. But we said, well, when you go this year, guess what? Don't take no for an answer. You the one got to present yourself. You you got to sell yourself. You got to take. You got to keep. Go back to the same company again if you have to. But you got to be persistent in whatever you want. Because guess what? When you don't give up, then God gonna answer your prayer. I wish I had some help here. Oh yeah, you you got to be persistent. This judge, this judge admits he admitted to himself the only reason I'm going to give this woman justice is so she can stop bothering me. Is there something to say? He, he didn't care about the case. He didn't care about her. He said, listen, I just want her to leave me alone. What, what you want? What you want? Here, you got it. Yep, you got it. You got justice. Put him away for 50 years. I don't care. But listen, he, she got what she wanted, right? She was persistent. What about us? How come we're not persistent in our prayer? It, listen, so it's no secret that this judge is not vindicating this widow out of right motives. He only did it to get her out of his hair. Her mo his motivation was just justice so he can have some peace. But watch this. Even though she did that, the question is this, if he could do that and be an unjust, unrighteous person, what does that say about God? Watch this. This is not 
God is not the judge. I want you to understand that. This is not a parallel comparison of God and the judge. No, this is the opposite of that. It's showing you that if an unrighteous, unjust, wicked man can do good for somebody, how much more can a righteous, good God who has no sin in him, how much will he bless you? If that's what a wicked person would do for you, what would a good person do for you? If a wicked person can be worn down, and he's not saying you can wear God down because you don't have to, because he's already good, right? He's already righteous. He's already going to do the right thing for you. The problem is you don't go to him enough. You're not persistent. The whole thing is be persistent in your prayer life, and guess what? The good God is going to bless you all the time. Oh, yes, 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 you will. We, we can't give up. The point is not that God is the judge. No, God is nothing like this judge. God wants to bless you all the time. What Jesus is telling us is that if we're per per persevering, just like the widow was persevering, then God will also bless us. Listen to verse 7 and uh, verse 8 says this, And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay? long over he will he delay long over them I tell you he will give justice to them speedily now in the unjust judge grants if he can unjust if he can grant this blessing to her God is going to grant other blessings now we're going to make this comparison to the second coming because remember we're talking about the second coming Jesus makes this comparison between the widow and the elect Notice what he said about the elect. If the judge can bless the widow, then God is going to bless the elect. My question is, who are the elect? The elect are the born-again believers. The elect are those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior. The elect are those who are calling out to him, what did the verse say? Day and night. You're calling on God. Oh, there, there it is right there. there. There's a characteristics of the elect. You are prayer warriors, elect. You are the ones who don't look at your circumstances in front of you, but you keep praying anyway. See, you don't, you don't go by what you see. You go by your faith. Yeah, where well, the scripture says we walk not by sight, but we walk what? By faith. We walk by faith. We can't walk about what the world is doing. We are walking by the word of God. The elect are those who pray day and night according to Jesus. Show yourself as God's elect through your prayer life. Show yourself to be a child of God by the way you pray. Show yourself a child of God by who, you, what you're asking God to do for you in your prayer life. Prayer is what draws life giving water when the well is deep. Prayer is what reaches into the realm of the eternal and draws strength of hope every single time. Prayer is what grips grace and holds tight until it arrives. How many of you going to pray until you get your answer? See, that's persistent prayer. Yeah, you got to pray until it arrives. I remember it was a theme of the, of the church I came from. They had a women's conference one year, and their theme was PUSH. I don't know if y'all remember that. And PUSH stands for something. It was an acronym for something. I think it says pray until something happens. Isn't that something? So you got to push your way through, right? You got to pray until something happens. And that's what he's saying. You got to be persistent in your prayers. Uh, last point. I'm going to my seat after I tell you this. This is point number three. You got to pray until the end. See, you can't pray in the middle and then quit. You can't pray uh, until two years from now and then quit. You got to pray until the end. Listen to this last part, verse 8. The last part of verse 8. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So how does Jesus connect this to the second coming of Jesus Christ? None. Now, Jesus teaches his followers how to address trials and tribulations while you're on this earth. And remember, we're, we're talking about those people who got to go through the great tribulation. You don't have to go through the great tribulation because you're going to be raptured up. But have you ever mentioned, I don't know if you ever read what's going to happen in the great tribulation, but just read the book of Revelations uh, and you will find
find out. But listen to this. It's going to be so bad in those seven years that the Bible says that uh, man, it's going to be a time that man has never seen or will never ever see again. It's, it's going to be so bad, the Bible says, that even the elect could have been lost had the Lord let that tribulation go one more day longer. That's how bad it's going to be. So Jesus is putting this verse and this passage next to his second coming. So you are not in the tribulation that those people are going to see. You don't have the trials that those people in the tribulation will see. And it says that they going to make it. It says that if they persevere, or those who get saved in the tribulation, if they persevere to the end, they will make it. So what about us. If they're going to go through the worst time in human history, and you're not going through the worst time of human history, what's your excuse? We, 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 we should be praying, thanking God every single day. Look, we, we don't see meteorites blowing up whole cities yet. No, no. We, we don't see where the blood, the, the oceans turn to blood yet, and every living thing in the ocean dies. We, we don't live in that time yet. We don't live in the time where the hell, there's going to be a hell storm, where each hell will weigh at least a hundred pounds each that would destroy cars and, and buildings right on the spot. We don't live to be all kind of wild locusts and, and crazy demon creatures all through the earth trying to kill folks. You better thank God you don't go through the tribulation. So what's your problem again? Oh, uh, you got a few bills, that's, that's what it is. You got a few aches and pains in your back that you can go to the chiropractor for. I mean, is that really your, your issue that you you got a few wayward children? You better thank God that you can pray for your kids. You, can, you better thank God that you have the aches and the pains. You've got to pray until the end. So watch this as I go to my conclusion. Listen, I want you to understand this, that even though we go through trials and tribulations, even though we have challenges on every hand, will I find faith and will Jesus find faith when he returns? Listen, again, we must go back to the previous verses to have to find out that if you don't have faith then you won't see God listen we must go back to the passage of scripture that tells us that in Noah's day he gave he didn't give up because he believed in the word of God we must go back to the word of God to find out even in Sodom and Gomorrah's day Lot was able to pull his family from a city that was being destroyed. It was a godless city. It was a faith, faithless city. But he put his faith in the Lord. And when God said, Lot, I want you to come out of that city. I want you to bring your family out. It was Lot who believed in God, pulled his family out and said, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Listen, the point here is that they are, we are living in times where people want life to be ordinary. We are living in times Times, uh, where people want to do whatever they want to do uh, but you got to keep praying uh, don't worry about the evilness in the world uh, don't worry about the wickedness in the world uh, and say, listen for God I'll live uh, and for God I'll die will Jesus find somebody watching uh, when he returns uh, will Jesus find uh, a group of people uh, that's going to be praising his name and, uh, and I just want to I just want to be a witness to you that he's going to find a group that's going to praise his name even in the end. You can't give up. You've got to fight until the end. You've got to pray until the end. You've got to hold up the bloodstained banner until the end. I'm going to my seat when I tell you this. I read the scripture and I kept reading the scripture trying to find out 
What kind of people will Jesus find when he comes back? Well, I found out that there was a group of people that no man could number that's going to praise him because they've been through a great tribulation. I found out there's going to be a group of people that's been washed by the blood of the Lamb and they're going to say, God, I thank you for bringing me out of my trials. Father, I thank you for bringing me out of my tribulations. Do I have anybody here that's going to say, God, I thank you for bringing me through my trials, bringing me through my tribulations? Then you need to pray until he returns. You need to pray until something happens. You need to pray until he turns your situation around. That's the kind of God we serve. Can you say yes? Can you say yes? Can you say yes? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Will he turn your situation around? Can you pray until something happens? Say yes. Come on, put your hands together. He died for your victory. He died so you can have a right to the tree of life. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Pray. Pray until something happens. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for being in your presence. Thank you for allowing us this message on prayer. That woman was persistent. She wanted answers. And Heavenly Father, you allowed a wicked judge to give her answers. But Lord, we know if he can be wicked and give good gifts to her, you being righteous and wonderful to us will also give us good gifts. I pray for those who are here today. If there's somebody here who wants Jesus as their savior and want to be persistent in their prayer life, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, just repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now accepting Jesus as my savior. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe, Father, that you raised him from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands. Lord, I place him as the King of kings and Lord of lords of my heart right now in the name of Jesus. And I repent of that sinful nature that I was born in. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone standing, it's prayer time. Let us come on down to the altar.